All right, all right, yes. guys. Larry. Got, I, I know we love the chicken one. David, don't eat too much. <laughs> don't eat too much. <laughs> 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 What's going on everybody on this episode of the Hot Pop Boys Sino Soul series where we are discovering and exploring Chinese food. We are gonna be covering and focusing on two unique styles of cooking that we have never covered on this channel. So Chinese food in a macro big picture sense okay. has eight different styles. But sometimes people argue that and say that eight is actually 13. Okay. Yeah. But then if you break that 13 down into its individual subdivisions, there's actually like, 13, like 70 styles. 70. So is it, it's either 8, 13, or 70. Man, I mean, China itself is so big. There's so many different dialects. There's so many different people. All right, so we're gonna be covering two styles of food. One from the northern province of Shandong, which we have covered before, but not this specific style. And then one from the southern style, which is from Fujian, but specifically Fuzhou. And here at Ika Sizzling Pot, our boy Sam from Qingdao is cooking up yellow braised chicken rice. Huang Menji. Huang Menji. Hop hop boys, let's go. Shandong food is sort of the birthplace of all northern food. Not that it hasn't taken its own influences in every province, okay. but Shandong food is generally considered the basis for Beijing, Tianjin, and all of Dongdaeng. I heard that Shandong is the birthplace of Chinese civilization. Okay, so technically, oh. technically you could say it came from Shandong. Confucius right. came from Shandong, I'm just saying. <laughs> Eat the good. chicken Bro. and the egg at the it's same time. Chicken. Bro, look at this braid. Wow. You guys don't know. It might look like generic on the outside, but trust me, it is not generic in the ginger yeah. scallion flavor. I think oh my gosh, I'm gonna make sure I get a pepper in this. Look at this. Oh look my this. god. So stews and braises are similar in that they're cooked slow. Yo, but the thing is, is so braise mm. is about adding the least amount of liquid possible to cook all the meat. While stewing is like you're completely submerging it in the liquid and then it's like boiling on top and everything like that. I think one of my favorite parts of the dish is that it uses dark meat. You know, like you said, the thigh meat, very juicy, yeah. you know, not dry. And I would say here, one of the more contemporary or Americanized things they do here is to provide chicken without the bone. If you're just trying to eat lunch real quick, without the bone works. All right, all right, yes. guys. Larry. Got, I, I know we love the chicken one. David, don't eat too much. <laughs> don't eat too much. <laughs> <laughs> Moving David, on. I'm looking at the cheese. David, David's northern I'm side. The, 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 the northern side is coming Shandong out. Shandong. Shandong. The, the stocky side. <laughs> 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 So this recipe and this flavor from the yellow braise is traditional, but doing it with pork ribs or, um, you know, beef tendon or uh, pig's feet is a new thing that they're doing here at Ika for the American market. Yeah. This is a baked potato? Oh, what is this? Yeah, what is this? That's a baked he, said, he said baked potato. I think That's it's a braise. Said, no, I said big. I gotta say the cheese definitely adds something. Now adding the cheese, I do think that's kind of the Korean American like influence that they have because you know stuff like Calbee Jim they would put cheese on it and you know everybody cheese is like an American I mean this cheese is a very American so oh, this is very flavorful mm. I have, the pork is actually really good too I think the cheese is a heavy hitter on this man I like the context of this it adds a little bit of a weight to the dish so it's a little bit heavier but it's not too heavy if you made me go attack something I'm gonna go with the Wang Man Ji the yellow braised chicken but if I'm just cold and I'm hungry and I've just been starving all day, I'm gonna go with the Huang Man Tai mm. I agree, man. It's like something where, let's just say, if you haven't eaten all day and you're starving, you gotta go for the pork. The Huang Man Yu Rou. You could get cheap beef that's decent yeah. in America. You cannot find cheap yeah. beef in Asia that is good. Huang, Huang Man beef. beef. I'm gonna eat it with a jalapeno. Mmm. Okay. I would say the braised beef there's definitely tastes the most similar to something that I've had. Because in Chinese, there is a lot of braised beef. My family used to do a braised duck. Similar flavoring, but obviously they use duck instead of you know beef. Yeah. So so before we get on to the vegetarian version, you know, we gotta finish off with the meats. And this is definitely a meat. We are talking about the pig's feet here, AKA the pork trotters. Trotter. I would say though- But you would say uh, some of the older generation, this is their favorite. Yo, they love it, man, they love it. So as you can see, the juice, in the, when it comes to the pork trotters, the braise is not as thick. It's a little bit more soupy. Ooh, ooh. 
I didn't expect it to be this tender. I feel like it's really good. Mmm. Right. Yo, I think I like braised mm, pork feet. I might have to say that. I might have to make that statement. Got a lot of fat. So much collagen. Gelatinous. Collagen. Collagenic. I'm gonna just make up that word. I don't know if that's a word. Collagenic. You chase collagenic. If you ever wanna practice kissing your girl on the cheek, but like you didn't get to do it yet. Yeah, <laughs> practice on some. If you, if you practice on. It feel just like it. <laughs> a lot of uh, Japanese dishes that are considered Chinese Japanese dishes, I can tell are influenced by this braised style with uh, the soy ginger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soy ginger. Yeah, soy ginger garlic. That's a, a very popular like uh, chicken wing flavor that people have. Uh, Shandong specifically uh -huh. in that region, whether that's Korea, Japan, had a gigantic influence historically. Oh yeah, it's right there. If you guys look at even where our mom is from or her parents are from, Yentai, it's actually that peninsula that's right next to South Korea. Vegetarian one. Huangman veggie. <laughs> All right, guys, look at this mushroom. I got confused on whether this was a piece of like pork or chicken or mushroom. This oh, thing's huge. mushroom is giant. It's it's a a block. Like, it could look like a, a ginger, too. You could trick people thinking that this is an abalone. That's not a no. Not a potato. We got to move on to Fujian food, right? right? But we have tried one of the main dishes of Jinnan style Shandong food. Okay. Shandong being one of the major eight, major 13 cuisines of China, this being a subdivision, Jinnan versus Jiaodong style. I would say my still, my favorite. Let me you guess, know, you know, I'm, I'm shocked. Huang Manji. You were gonna say the trotter, right? Actually, and I love chicken. Chicken, but doing but I gotta it go with the pork, pork rib on this one. Say to the camera, uh, make him real dramatic. For dunkability, I go with the chicken. What? I'm picking the pork. Wow! Overall, overall flavor, I'm picking the pork. Nell said, it's just like, Nelson. I just Nelson. knocks you no. out. All right, guys, it's actually time to take a train from Jinan down to Fuzhou. Let's go. Oh, All right, Nell, you have got to leave pretty soon because you got something very important to do. But before you, you take go, care of the hammy, got to you gotta get hammy. go to some physical therapy. But before that, let's load up on this Fujo dessert. I don't know, man. That's this is interesting. It's got have rice. Have you ever seen anything like that before in your life? Oh, no. Nah. I mean, they got the weirdest mix in there. They got they got grass jelly, fruits, rice, peanuts. Yeah. Like, oh, what, what is that? Raisins? Raisins. Oh, man. God. Be open-minded, no. How can it be bad, though? Those are all, all right, things right. that are good. Right, you know right. what I mean? Spiny, shui fan. Wow, okay. No, this is really refreshing. I can see in the summertime, because you know China's mad hot, people will be out on the street, you know, with the shirts off, mad sweaty, and they eat this, they'll be cooled off instantly. No, no, no. With the shirt, instantly. With the shirt lifted over the belly. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> when they're just sitting, just like, I rarely ever eat sweet rice. I've never had rice like this before. Especially with watermelon. No oh, man, the watermelon. I actually really enjoyed it. I did, no. man. That was a shocker. No, that was, was really a shocker. Fuzo dumpling balls. Huh? Ooh. Mm. Mm. Right. Tastes like a little Italiano meat the ball. Very good, actually. I'm... Did you guys get like an explosion of burst? A crunch when you bit into it, or was that just me? No, there's some, there's like some crunchy thing in there, right? Crunchy greens, what kind of greens is that? Chestnuts. Actually, the dumpling skin is a little bit translucent. That's what I like. That's really cool. It's almost like chopped hall fun in chok with clams. Yo, Fujo like a mix. But this is clammy McGee. Yeah. Never had a clammy clam kanji rice noodle. One. Tom, Tom Yum donuts. donuts. Green scallion donuts. I'm very excited because I love scallion pancakes. Donut. Scallion donut. One bite. Don't take no more oh, bites. That looks good. 4.5 out of 5. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> it's light, crispy, not too, you know, oily. And your favorite, very mad scallion taste. Yeah. Oh, all right, yo, I got, give me a napkin, dude. Oh, I'm excited. If you dip this into this, those are two things that we have categorically not had. Dog, yo, take a look at this. Never have I had this bite in my life before. I'm gonna do the same. Mmm. Mmm. The 
only other time we've had Fujinese food, it was like at the really cheap spots, and shout out to those because they're great value. You're talking about New York? It is, yeah, it's a great value in New York, but they weren't as high quality. This, I believe, is their Fuzhou Chao Fun Si. Yeah. Dish, it, well, they, it looks like Singzhou Chao Mai Fun, which is Singaporean Mai Fun noodles. Which there's also a lot of Hokkien Fujinese people in Singapore as well. Yeah. So maybe Mai Fun, you know, Chao Mai Fun, is kind of like a Hokkien thing. Hey! No, that's what the guy in the back said. The back he was like, hey, hey, Fujian, low key, influenced a lot of the food in Japan, but they don't give him credit. That's just what he said. That's what he said. Never at actually Fujo restaurant. It's not bad, it's not bad. Mm. 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 So we are gonna pack this up to go. Do not worry, this food is not gonna go to waste. And what was your favorite? I'm gonna go with the bifan. Yeah. I really, really like this buy me bifan. The uh, rice dessert, watermelon peanut, green jelly, hybrid water. That was that was super refreshing. Was good. These are our two favorite dishes from Fuzhou Cuisine Restaurant in Arcadia. Um, this is Fuzhou Lo Ying, which is AKA, you can pretty much call it the Fuzhou one ton. Okay. It makes sense because I remember at Xu Jiao, they would call these one tons. Yeah, yeah, it, it is a one ton, but it's Fujo style. It definitely looks different. Um, and this is the best one I've ever had. Hot Pot Boys. We are always exploring the diversity of Chinese food in America. You know, shout out to our Shandong brother out there, Sam, and uh, to the very cool owners here, Kia Lu. Lu. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching that video. Please, in the comments below, let us know if there's any other cuisines or provinces or sub-cuisines of Chinese food that you guys want us to find out about here. Um, the 626 might have it, so we might be in luck. But uh, let us know in the comments down below. And again, also let us know what other types of food, non-Chinese, that you guys want us to try because, you know, for us, discovering things is really fun and it's interesting, and hopefully you guys learned something too. So, David, Andrew from the Fun Gross, shout out to Nelson, he had to go. Until next time, we out. Peace. Everything from this Fujo style cuisine has been light and tasty. I agree, very light. Very light, umami seafood, and very, like this. <clears throat> very lip smacking, bro. Yeah.